you go with your heart and it will follow. I, I've met some people who are alone and have established uh, virtual mm -hmm. things with people. Just one other person is fine mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. And then you can create or bring in other people. Welcome to Sharing Our Marianist Stories, a podcast produced by the North American Center for Marianist Studies in Dayton, Ohio. I'm Mike Bennett, Media Administrator for NACMAS. In this episode, we hear from Jerry Albright and Marcita Riley, who are two lay Marianists that live outside of Topeka, Kansas. And they speak a little bit about their experience of building a lay Marianist community in an area that could be called a uh, remote within the Marianist family. This episode was recorded at the 2023 Lay Marianist Assembly in St. Louis, Missouri. There's a couple things that Marcita and Jerry will mention in their story that I'd just like to preface a little bit. One is their mention of Renew 2000, which was a program that they participated in within their parish that called people together in small faith communities for prayer and to focus on the needs of the Catholic Church as we enter the 21st century. The second is that Marcita references her brother, Father Dave Fleming, who was a Marianist priest and served for 10 years as Superior General of the Society of Mary in Rome. And the Superior General is basically the head of the Society of Mary globally. Additionally, they talk about when they went and visited Father Dave in Rome, and there's a mention of celebrating Father Dave's 50th anniversary, and that occurred in 2006, which was when Father Dave celebrated his 50th anniversary as a Marianist. Third is a resource that Marcita references called Things Marianist, which is a publication available for purchase on our website. Each publication is about four to six pages and describes a key dynamic of our Marianist charism in easy to understand language. And the last thing is that a couple times Marcita and Jerry make a reference to symbols that they have brought with them or that they have put on display. And they're just mentioning uh, a couple symbols that they brought to the lay Marianist assembly where everyone was invited to bring something that symbolized their community and their commitment to the Marianists. And then to bring that up during the opening prayer of that assembly. And so that's what that is. With those things in mind, I'm happy to turn the floor over to Marcita and Jerry as we listen to them share about their Marianist story. I'm Marcita Riley, and my connection to the Marianist family is really first through my brother, David Fleming. He was a Marianist priest, now deceased. And he was a, a leader with the brothers for a long time. And... I'm Jerry Albright from Delia, Kansas. We live in the heartland, the U.S. Marcia and I have been friends since our kids were growing up and, and shared our parish church as well. And we, we've had a conversation group, a study group, a Bible group for years. And then it kind of evolved toward the Marianist charisms. And uh, we loved meeting David and knowing that story as well. He grounded us, I think, too. So we met then and uh, kind of have evolved since probably about 25 years or more into the community that we are today. I grew up with the Marianists, and I loved the Marianist charism. It it kept me actually in the church, but I there I'm not near a Marianist center, mm -hmm. and so I wanted something. I wanted the Marianist spirit, and I wanted a Marianist community, and so I just asked mm -hmm. my friends if they would like to kind of form a, 
Marianist community. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't. Know, nobody knew what a Marianist community no, was. No, no, we had to. Yeah, educate ourselves. We had, and that was what it was. It mm -hmm. was educating ourselves. It's not like educating yourself when you're at a Marianist center because, you know, when you're at a university or a center, you see the charism. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a charism no. to see, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we didn't have that mm -hmm. and you know my experience with David and in the things that we did with the brothers and those kinds of things when we went to visit with him was always you know it was communal mm -hmm. it was having discussions it was gentle things mm -hmm. <laughs> and discussing things gently and accepting things that maybe would really be different than what you mm -hmm. right and non-confrontational non-confrontational entirely mm -hmm. and not saying this is what you should mm -hmm. shaking your finger mm -hmm. so anyway this is what I kind of was yearning for so we came together and mm -hmm. where we started was with Renew 2000 mm -hmm. was part of our archdiocese and mm -hmm. we had a little thing like that we started that we would meet once a month. It mm -hmm. was always dinner, around dinner, because yeah. we're and, a farm and, community. Yes, <laughs> uh -huh. yes. It's always about food. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we really lured our husbands, yes. for the most part, yes. with uh, yes. Yes. wine and food. Yes, mm -hmm. wine and food. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and, yeah. you know, and yes, and and we would and we talk a little about discussion. a little discussion, <laughs> and it was a different way of being together in and talking about spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our group was about 10 couples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it draws people together mm -hmm. gently. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, we could learn together. We could learn together. And mm -hmm. you know, like, like, I mean, it was a, some of, some of it was radical thoughts, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. for a conservative for conservative community. community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they didn't they didn't throw us out, mm -hmm. and and actually, I tried to keep us under the radar for a long time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I was afraid our parish priest might mm -hmm. throw us out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or tell us what we should be studying. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. So my, um, beyond Marcita's personal family, uh, went with her to Rome to uh, celebrate David's 50th anniversary, yeah. where he was uh, the uh, superior. Yeah. And just staying there and meeting the brothers, and that was my first uh, experience with a group, uh, you know, a Marianist yeah. thing. Well, here I was in Rome, and we were going to see the Pope, and, <laughs> but it was just very ordinary. I mean, they were cooking, they made f all the flower arrangements, we went to the market with them, and you really couldn't pick out who's a priest, who's a brother. Uh -huh. And um, it was just so ordinary. Uh -huh. and very uplifting and the uh, uh, the calm and the quietness of it and uh, you know I, you didn't mind going to mass and prayer several yeah, times right. and all the things that they yeah. just kind of incorporated in their life and so that was it was really uh, a wonderful experience something that I probably would never have done as far as getting to go to Rome so mm -hmm. that was my experience with a larger group and the really mm -hmm. the world community of Marianists mm -hmm. and we started uh, we connected with later mm -hmm. we connected with Father Al McMinnemy mm -hmm. and he would come to visit and oh my gosh our group of course our group is an older group but oh they just loved him because yes. again he just exudes that Marianist mm -hmm. spirit and they mm -hmm. had never met a priest no. that is uh -huh. so humble and mm -hmm. loving mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah just Kindness, kindness, just general kindness, gentleness. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, and he shared lots of materials with us, and we just yeah. really ate it up and looked forward to his visits. He would visit us at least twice a year for a while. So, Jerry, since you were unfamiliar with the Marinus family at the time, 
I'm curious what that experience was like for you to be engaged with this faith community. And how did your experience of the Marianists impact your experience of this faith community? Well, um, being a convert, sometimes the rules get in the way. Catholic rules? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Church rules. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And so it was, it was a nice thing for me personally. Then just knowing Marcita and David, their mom was wonderful Mm -hmm. and just, um, I, I hate to say ordinary, but just you wouldn't pick them out of a crowd of, mm-hmm. you know, of not being uh, of anything but kind and generous with their time. And David walked us around Rome, which he knew well, and did all the drove, did all these things that were so mundane for him. He had a really big, big job, but um that was just the way he was. Yeah. And then, then in that setting there, you could see that they're all that way. Marcita and her family lived the way, lived the charisms and the virtues. And so it, you know, you go to mass and, it, it, and you're in a different world and then you leave and you don't maybe even think of it for the rest of the week. That's not very nice to say, but, and then it also validates your personal view of what your life should be like. And I, think that we're all, we're all um, called to serve, and then you don't know how to serve. It Marianist brings you uh, and gives you the permission to do your own talents in some way, and there's always a way to uh, come out and uh, you know serve our own parish, which we have done. We've supported our parish in really hard times, and by lifting it up, I think and trying to make it to the people and not the the church or the clerical part of it. Thanks, Jerry. That's a good reminder that the often the lived experience is really what brings people in to the Marinus family. Marcita, I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about what it was like to start this community, some of the dynamics that you were mindful of, among starting the community. And I'm asking that because I think there's a lot of people in similar situations. They're in what we might call Marianist remote areas and struggling to find or create a sense of community. So can you speak to that a little bit? I just called some friends together that I thought might be interested. And I just said, would you be interested in just kind of gathering and having a small faith community together? And we'll just figure it out ourselves. And I wanted to be sure it wasn't what, what I envision it could, it maybe is in when you're in college and you say you're going to be in a small faith community and you go right away into formation, formation. Well, this can't be like this. No. Because mm-hmm. there is no model that people know they first have to learn about what is this spirituality is mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. So it's about... The feeling in your the heart. The feeling uh-huh. in your heart. Mm-hmm. So to me, it was about sharing little bits of information, which is what I got from the Things Marianist mm-hmm. pamphlets that mm-hmm. are just marvelous. Mm-hmm. And ju- they're just discussion starters. Mm-hmm. And it just gives people a different... something to talk about. Mm-hmm. And also it's content that people have to speak from the heart. Mm -hmm. And whenever you start speaking from the heart, sharing from the heart, you really make good connections Mm -hmm. with each Mm -hmm. other. And that's what brings you together. Mm -hmm. And already you were kind of friends. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. that starts building the connection and you want to start coming together and Mm -hmm. it builds the faith community. And then you have to become the animator. You have to be like, Shamanad and I'm, I mean, I feel like I have been the animator for these different communities because mm-hmm. then I had to say, okay, we are a Marianist community mm-hmm. and you start naming it, mm-hmm. but you don't really name it right away mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because that would scare people away. Mm-hmm. But it's so worth it to try it and it takes a little time, but it's so worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. And um, I think you've spoken well to the work that goes into starting a community like this. 
And I imagine there's also work as the community evolves. And so can you touch on that a little bit about how the community has evolved over time? We have shared children and grandchildren. Yes. And we now have health problems and death. Yes. She, you know? yes. she brought this picture of our community and she said we look like a, what'd you say? Oh, a bingo group from a <laughs> nursing home. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's in the front center. <laughs> yeah. She said, I don't want to take it. Because yes. you know? <laughs> we progressed to that. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. it's, it's a, a community that is deep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All of us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, it's a faith community. It's mm -hmm. a faith-based community mm -hmm. that never would have been without that Marianist core. Exactly. And I think it's that uh, Marianist core that not only calls us to grow together within community, but to also be sent and to have an impact on the world around us. Can you talk a little bit about the ways that you feel your community has had an impact? It kind of goes also to modeling for your parent, for your children as parents and um, creating something that they can grab onto as more of a way of life. Or how do you, what do you do for people on Wednesday or Thursday or any other day and it's partly a life of service, you know, mm -hmm. too. And every single person in our group has been a, a valuable leader in our parish. Mm -hmm. You know, Eucharistic ministers, readers, mm -hmm. religious ed catechists. And so we all recognize that the importance of that as well. Mm -hmm. Well, and we've had some troubled times mm -hmm. in our parish. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that there was one time when Father Al was there, wasn't he? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Our parish was just mm -hmm. very tense. Mm -hmm. And was that when he introduced Our Lady of Untire of Knots? Yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what, one of the things he said is, you know, you have to stop being part of the instigator of all of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't contribute to Don't that. Don't contribute to mm -hmm. it. Uh huh. And we talked about it. And it made all the difference. It in did. The world. We started praying that, and things changed. Things changed. Yeah. And it's been more than one time yeah. that we've instituted that. Right. And that's yeah. the first time, well, it's the first time I saw that our group could be visible. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And since then, we have been noticed. Yes. Uh -huh. As a, as a mm -hmm. small faith community. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to someone in the Marinus family who finds themselves in a remote area or maybe someone in the Marinus family who finds themselves with a good number of friendships, but not necessarily a sense of community that they might be searching for? Just you go with your heart and it will follow. I, I've met some people who are alone and have established uh, virtual mm -hmm. things with people. Just one other person is fine for mm -hmm. a while. Mm -hmm. And then you can create or bring in other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think just, I think that's it. You have to just go with your heart mm -hmm. and simply ask and start small and simply. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just invite mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. and the ones who can, who want to show up will. Mm -hmm. You have to take a risk. And let go. If, if somebody doesn't show up that you wish would, just, it's okay. Mm -hmm. you, people, all, we all have to be in the right place mm -hmm. when we um, commit well, to something anyway. And the same thing, like she said about our husbands. You, mm -hmm. you know, just be gentle too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let them yeah. come in their own time. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And the key sometimes they just come for the wine and yeah. the cheese. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. Something yeah. brings somebody. In. Yes, uh huh. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. I really want to encourage the singleton or the loner Marianus to reach out to others to, to grow 
the Marianist family, mm -hmm. wherever they are, mm. in little ways. I mean, it doesn't have to be big. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. But to grow that charism, because it's the Marian face of the church, and mm -hmm. I just believe that that Marian face of the church is so important, especially right now. Mm -hmm. Don't hit that stop button yet. Before we finish with our concluding question, I just want to offer a word of thanks to both Jerry and Marcita for spending this time with us and sharing their Marianist story. And a word of thanks to you, our listener, for listening to this episode of Sharing Our Marianist Stories and for your continued support of the North American Center for Marianist Studies. Make sure to follow us wherever you listen to podcasts so that you'll be notified when we have future episodes released. And follow us on our social media accounts at This Is NACMAS on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube so that you have access to our ongoing educational and formational content focused on our Marianist family, history, and charism. And now to wrap up this episode of Sharing Our Marianist Story, we return with our final question. So we know the founders corresponded with each other via letter writing. Yes. Uh huh. So if you were going to write a letter to anyone dead or alive mm -hmm. and be guaranteed a response, who would you write to and what would be the topic? Well, I had, I had that experience. I lost my husband a, a year and a half ago or so. Mm. And out of totally out of character of anything, I would I did write a letter that I put in his uh. coffin. I think he's still with me for sure, and uh, my grandchildren think that he's every cardinal that they see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we have lots of cardinals in the winter, and they're all convinced that it's him watching. So he's watching over us. So.